Welcome to an amazing video on sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, don't leave the video, please, because the beginning of this is going to be some ugly, weird, long definitions for sine, cosine, tangent you're not going to want to hear. But my job is to break those down and make it actually quite simple and make it all interconnected. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you've watched my videos on standard position of an angle, uh, measuring angles, radians, degrees, and even video I have on unit circle. So I'd highly recommend watching any of those because it'll definitely help in terms of some of the terminology I'm going to use in this video. All right, so let's first look at the definition of sine. Given an angle in standard position and a circle centered at the origin, there is a point P where the terminal ray intersects the circle. The sine of the angle is the ratio of the vertical displacement of P from the angle, or excuse me, from the x-axis to the distance between the origin and P. Therefore, for a unit circle, the sine of the angle is the y-coordinate of the point P. All right, so that's a lot to unpack there. So let's first just start with the beginning. Given an angle in center position and a circle centered at the origin 0, 0, there is a point P where the terminal ray intersects the circle. So I actually have that drawn right here. Here's a beautiful drawing of this. So I have, I have a angle in standard position. Standard position means that we always start on the positive x-axis. And we have a terminal side that ends at a point on a circle that has an origin of 0, 0. Okay, awesome. Everything makes sense. So again, this is the setup for understanding the definition of sine. We have an angle drawn in standard position. There's that angle. We'll just call it theta. That angle led me to a terminal side. And because I have a circle drawn in center position, the terminal side leads us to a point x comma y. Now, sine of that angle is the ratio of the y coordinate, which is the vertical displacement, right? The vertical distance straight down at a 90 degree angle between the point and the x axis. So it's that y value divided by the radius. And the radius is obviously the radius of a circle, which could be viewed as any, any length. The initial side or the terminal side are both going to be the same radius. So that is what sine is. Again, it's that ratio of the y coordinate divided by the radius for a point on a circle drawn in standard position. Okay, that wasn't too bad, I hope. Let's talk about cosine. Given an angle in center position and a circle centered at the origin, there is a point P where the terminal side intersects the circle. Oh, same picture we just drew. Okay, the cosine of the angle is the ratio of the horizontal displacement of P from the y-axis, that would be the x-coordinate, to the distance between the origin and the point P. Therefore, for a unit circle, the cosine of the angle is the x-coordinate of point P. So let's go back to my picture because I have an angle drawn in center position with a circle centered at the origin 0, 0, and I have a terminal side that leads me to a point P. Actually, maybe I should label this point as P so we can see it labeled there. All right, so cosine of that angle is the ratio of the horizontal displacement. That is the horizontal distance. I'm going to use green for this. It's a horizontal distance between the x, or excuse me, the y-axis and that point. So again, you could look at that like right there. There it is. Same distance above or below. It's that horizontal distance, which again, on a coordinate plane, that's your x value, the horizontal distance from the y-axis. That's your x coordinate. So the cosine value is that x coordinate distance divided by the radius again. So pretty simple, so a little different than sine. So sine is the ratio of the y divided by the radius. Cosine is the ratio of the x divided by the radius. So come on, it's not too bad yet. I know that the wording of those definitions is awkward because they talk about the, the displacement, the vertical, the horizontal displacement. That's just talking about the x and y coordinate just in a really fancy way because that's what an x coordinate is. It's how far you moved over left or right horizontally from that x-axis, and the y-coordinate is how far you move vertically up or down from the x-axis. All right, one more to go here, tangent. So once again, given an angle and center position, okay, same setup. The tangent of the angle is the slope, if it exists, of the terminal ray. What? Tangent is the slope of the terminal ray? Okay, how is that? Well, because the slope of the terminal ray is the ratio of the vertical displacement to the horizontal displacement. So that would be a ratio of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate. Okay, so the tangent of the angle is what I just said, the ratio of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate of the point at which the terminal ray intersects the unit circle. 
So if we go back to our picture of an angle drawn in standard position with a circle centered at zero, zero, we have tangent. Tangent, by definition, is the ratio of the y value, that's that vertical displacement of the point, divided by the x value, that is the horizontal displacement of that point. And if you think about it, that's why they're recognizing that as the slope of that terminal ray. The slope of this terminal ray right here is, you know, how much it has moved vertically over how much it has moved horizontally, which is, well, the slope of a line. Come on now. And that is how we find tangent. Okay, so hopefully that all makes a lot of sense. Now let's tie a couple other really important things together with this picture. Hopefully now you have a pretty good rough understanding of the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. But let's talk about some more things because if you notice, I just drew a triangle, right? There would be the hypotenuse and there is the height and there is the base and I drew a triangle right there. And, and furthermore, that is a right triangle. I'm actually going to pull that right triangle out right here, right? So here is the point up here, which we know is x comma y. The vertical displacement would be the y value. The horizontal displacement would be the x value. And the hypotenuse would be, well, the radius, right? The terminal side. And there's something I really hope everybody knows about right triangles. That is that the sides are all intertwined through the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, hopefully you have a little bit of a remembrance of that rule. But remember, C is the hypotenuse. A and B are the legs. And the legs are interchangeable. So in this picture, I have the legs of X squared plus Y squared equals the hypotenuse, which is R squared. So not only do we have these new functions of sine, cosine, and tangent, and I hope we're starting again to understand them, but there's actually another connection that does not involve sine, cosine, or tangent, but that is just a connection between the point right here, x comma y, and the radius of the circle. And that connection is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And maybe you even recognize that as the equation of a circle. You know, I don't know how much mathematics you've had before watching this video, but that's the equation of a circle in the x, y coordinate plane, centered at zero, zero. Okay, so furthermore, right, let's think about this one more time. I really want to emphasize this triangle here. This is the angle that we're looking at theta, the angle that led us to this point, x comma y. Now, you might remember this from geometry class. You might remember sine is the opposite of a right triangle divided by the hypotenuse. Well, yeah, look at my picture. If I have my angle theta, the opposite side is the y coordinate divided by the hypotenuse, which is the radius. So that is, I'm not like going against what you've already learned in geometry, that sine of an angle is the y over the r, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine, if you remember, is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Well, if I'm looking at my angle theta, the adjacent side is x, the hypotenuse is r, so we have x divided by r. And lastly, again, you might remember from geometry class, tangent is the ratio of the opposite side of the angle divided by the adjacent side to the angle. In my picture, the opposite side would be y, the adjacent side would be x, so that is tangent, y divided by x. But this is cool because it's all connected in our coordinate plane, right? Because this isn't just some triangle that's just loosely drawn on the board or thrown wherever. This is a very specific triangle where the terminal side, the hypotenuse, the radius, lots of different ways I can re refer to it, lands us at a point P. So the cool thing here is that we actually end up with five, four values. I'll say four, make it a little bit easier. So we have four values. We have the angle. The angle tells us where we go right? The angle tells us where to stop. And we have our radius. The radius would be the length of the terminal side. And no matter where the angle is, the radius should be the same because on any circle, the radius is the distance between the origin and the circle's um, rim. And that's the same no matter where you are. But now we also have x and y because where that angle takes us stops at a point, And that point has an x, horizontal displacement, and a y, vertical displacement. So we have these four things, x, y, r, radius, and theta. And they're all inter interconnected with the trigonomic functions of sine, cosine, and tangent, and this non-trigonomic, just simply an equation, that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 
Now, the one other thing that was mentioned in those definitions is that when you are in a circle of radius 1, you are known as a unit circle. So when you have a circle of radius 1, all of the math becomes a little bit easier here because if your radius is 1, y divided by 1 is just y. x divided by 1 is, well, just x. Now, tangent does not involve the radius, so it's still going to be y over x. And then when we use this equation down here, we have x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. So those are just if you are on the unit circle. Now, if you don't have a radius of 1, then unfortunately you're not on the unit circle and you, know, you can't use those ideas. We've got to go back to y over r, x over r, y over x, and so forth. All right, one more thing I want to show you here as well. Now, another way that we could think about this is solving, right? Just, just try to throw some quick math at you here. So I know i got a lot going on here, so let me get a clean page. Okay, so here's a cleaner version of all this because I was doing a lot of writing there. All right, so again, we got an angle. I'm going to draw a different quadrant here just to you know, make it a little bit different. Got an angle. Here it is. Let's call it alpha this time. doesn't really matter what we call it, but that angle lands at a point. We'll call that point x, y. We got a radius. Okay, now here's what we already learned. Sine of that angle. Whoop, I almost said theta, but it should now be alpha. Again, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to use something different here. It would be the y-coordinate, the vertical displacement, divided by the radius. But notice that, you know, if I multiply everything by r, I get r times sine of alpha equals y. So, again, this is just, I'm just trying to emphasize more connections here. I could look at this y-coordinate right here as the radius times sine of the angle. And likewise, I know that cosine of of alpha, gosh, I keep saying theta, I get so used to saying it, is the x, the horizontal displacement of that point, divided by the radius. I can once again multiply everything by r. I can just apply algebra, I'm not doing anything that I'm not allowed to, and I get r times cosine of alpha equals x. So this x coordinate right here could be viewed as r times cosine of theta, alpha. <laughs> All right, so again, I could replace the x with r times cosine of alpha, and I can replace the y with r times sine of alpha. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? I'm not going against any rules. I'm just using some of my algebra skills. Oh, yeah, and don't forget, we already talked about the fact that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? So I could take that a step further as well, and I could say, hey, why don't we replace this x with, well, r times cosine of alpha. So r times cosine of alpha squared. And I could do the same thing with the y. I could replace it with r times sine of alpha squared. Don't forget the square equals r squared. So all I'm trying to do is just show you more connections. At the end of the day, we have four values. We have x, we have y, we have r, and we have theta. They are all intertwined. We have an angle that leads us to a point. That point is x comma y, and that point is a certain distance from the origin. That would be the radius. And all of these values have some really cool relationships, right? We have the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, that all have some relationships there between the angle x, y, and r. Then we have this um, algebraic equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But we could even make some replacements because we know that y can be viewed as r times sine of the angle. x can be viewed as r times cosine of the angle. And we could really just connect it all together. If you understand that trigonomic connection between these four values, then you really do have a strong grasp of trigonometry. So I really hope that that makes a lot of sense. I hope this video broke down for you what sine, cosine, and tangent are. Not only what the definitions are, which sine, cosine, tangent are kind of ugly definitions in of themselves in terms of a lot of words. Hopefully my pictures, although terrible drawing, I know, make a lot of sense in terms of what they represent. But it all starts off with a angle drawn in center position with a circle centered at the origin zero zero and through that we have a lot of really cool connections between x y r and the angle all right that's it for this video um stay tuned to other videos are going to actually show we could work on some problems where these x y's and r's aren't just generic x y's and r's they're actual numbers so we could actually put some some context behind this these ideas and these theorems all right see you later